وأقولوا في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى Today we're going to start بإذن الله الكريم A series on um, القواعد الفقهية المتعلقة بالمعاملات المالية The legal maxims of Islamic jurisprudence related to financial transaction. That's the topic that we're going to start today, inshallah ta'ala. Today, bi'idhnillah al-kareem, I'm only going to go through the introduction, the muqaddimah. But before I go into the introduction, I want to say to each and every one of you, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He didn't leave a matter that will get us closer to Jannah, and that will distance us from the hellfire. And that will bring about good for us in this world, except that he, sallallahu, Allah Azza wa Jalla, and the Messenger, they both showed us it. So there is not a path that will take us to Jannah. And there is not a path that will distance us from the hellfire, except Allah and His Messenger clarified it for us. And there isn't also a worldly benefit that we can attain, except that the Sharia worked towards fulfilling it for us. Ridalika, the poet, he said, فَلَيْسَ خَيْرٌ قَطٌ إِلَّا قَرَّرَهُ That there is no good whatsoever except that the Sharia affirmed it and established it for us. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ مِنْ شَرٍ إِلَّا حَذَّرَهُ And there is no evil except that the Sharia warned us against that evil. فَدِينُنَا لَمْ يَخْلُ عَنْ حُكْمٍ عَلَى Our religion is not absent from any ruling in any matter فَدِينُنَا لَمْ يَخْلُوا عَنْ حُكْمٍ عَلَى مَرِّ الزَّمَانِ لَوْ بَدَى مَا أَعْضَلَى Our religion has not become absent from a ruling in a matter over the years and the decades. Our religion, وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدُ وَالْمِنَّةِ has always placed a ruling on every matter. But how has it done it? لِأَنَّهُ قَدِحْتَ وَقَوَاعِدَ تُسْتَخْرَجُ الْأَحْكَامَ عَنْهَا رَاشِدَى The way in which it is done it is that our religion has made legal maxims, qawa'id, that we can bring every matter back to. That's how the religion has placed a ruling on every matter. There are um, all-inclusive um, rulings or qawa'id principles that everything that happens can be brought back to. So that is why I felt there was a need for us to use this approach and make the discussion or the lesson or the series that we want to start, which is connected to financial, uh, financial transaction. It's connected to what? Um, it's related to financial transaction. That the best approach would be to go through it from the angle of what? Al-Qawa'id al fiqhiyah From the angle of principles. The, from the angle of legal maxims. And that is very vital that we do it from that angle. Why is that the... Or why should we do it in that way? I will discuss that inshallah ta'ala soon. But what I want to give you all inshallah ta'ala is a layout, an understanding of how this session is going to be inshallah ta'ala. I'm going to be speaking about the topic. What did I say the topic is? The topic is Al-Qawa'id Al-Fiqiyya Al-Muta'alliqa Bil-Mu'amalat Al-Maliyya So we have Al-Qawa'id Al-Fiqiyya we have Al-Mu'amalat and we have Al-Maliyya. We have three words. So we have Al-Qawa'id Al-Fiqiyya. We also have Al-Mu'amalat and we also have the term Al-Maliyya. What do those mean? Is what I'm going to be discussing in this introduction. So Al-Qawa'id Al-Fiqiyya, I'm going to discuss it from three angles, inshallah ta'ala. The first one is فوائد دراسة القواعد الفقهية. What is the benefit of studying قواعد الفقهية? Number two, حقيقة القواعد الفقهية. 
What does qawaid al fiqhiyya mean? I mean? What is the reality of qawaid al fiqhiyya? Number three, هل القواعد الفقهية حجة يستند إليها؟ The third one is Is قواعد الفقهية proof that you can use when a person asks you for an issue? Can you say a قاعدة فقهية as a response to a person who asks you a question? Are you allowed to respond to them with a قاعدة فقهية? So those are the three angles which we're going to discuss what قواعد الفقهية means and understanding of قواعد الفقهية. Then we're going to move on to the second term that is in our uh, that's in our um, session today, which is al muamalat. What does muamalat mean? That's the first thing we'll talk about. Al maqsud bil muamalat in the fuqaha. What do the jurists mean by al muamalat? And number two, we're going to be speaking about anwa al muamalat al fiqhia, the types of qawa uh, sorry, the types of al muamalat. There are. The Mu'amalat al fiqhiyya how many types are there? We'll be discussing that inshallah ta'ala. The third t- term that's in our topic today is Al-Maliyya. We're going to be discussing that or we're going to be tackling that from two angles. Number one, we're going to define um, the term Al-Bayah. Okay, we're going to define and describe and, def- and go over and cover the term Al-Bayah. In the language and according to the scholars, according to the jurists, what do they define as the word al-bayah? And then last but not least, we're going to take as-sifat al-lazimat al-bayah. The descriptions and the attributes that have to be present in a financial transaction, that have to be found in order for it to be a financial transaction which is permissible. So that's inshallah ta'ala going to be what we're going to do today inshallah ta'ala. Let me start with the first point which is fawaid, the benefit of dirasatul qawaid al fiqhiyya What is the benefit of studying qawaid al fiqhiyya Why should we make this topic al muamalat al maliyya We're going to be talking about a financial transaction. Why are we making it into a legal maxims? Why don't we just do the topic? Why are we making it into a qawaid fiqhiyya? Because the reason or the benefit of us studying this topic from the perspective or from the angle of al-qawaid al-fiqhiyya is for the following reasons. Number one, as you all know, the furu' al-fiqhiyya the furu' al fiqhiyya the sub-branches, the fiqh books that we study, they're too much. Meaning, the fiqh books, in them there are many masail, there are many issues in there, there are many matters in there. For instance, the kitab al-minhaj by al-imam Abi Zakariya al-Nawawi rahimahullah, that which, is, that which was originally taken from the kitab al-Muharrar by Abu al-Qasim al-Rafi'i. This book, al-minhaj, the scholars, they say it has in it 60,000 masail in it. 60,000 masail. So how could a talib or ilm, a student of knowledge, memorize and retain 60,000 masail in his head and remember it? And then the nawazin and the mustajaddat the, the new things that are going to come are not in those 60,000. There's new things that can come. There are thousands as well. The Kitab Irshad al-Ghawi by Ibn al muqri Abu Bakr Ismail Ibn al muqri This Kitab, the scholars, they say, in it is what? Which is taken origin from the Hawis Saghir. It's written by Hawis Saghir, it's written by Najmuddin al-Qazwini. Is, in it is 80,000 Masail. So the issues that were spoken about by the fuqaha and the jurists before in the fiqh books are so much. A student can't keep all of that and retain all of that the way he can if he studies al-qawaid al-fiqhiyya. Qawaid al-fiqhiyya is one of the ways to retain that. And it gives you tabtul al-furu' al-fiqhiyya. You'll be precise, you have precision in the furu' issues. With that, if you open the fiqh books, for example, today, the fiqh books as Al-Minhaj or Umdatul Fiqh or 
Al Irshad by Ibn Muqri and others, you realize that the fiqh books are divided into two ibadat and mu'amalat, right? And the ibadat, the scholars is divided into ibadat which are al badaniya, like as salah and siyam, and ibadat which are maliyah, like zakat, and the third one which is mu'amalat, which is mushtaraka between the two, which is its maliyah and is also badaniya, like hajj. How can a person remember all of that? The mu'amalat, the scholars, they divide it into five. We're going to speak, we're going to speak about it later, inshallah ta'ala, in more details. Mu'amalat, which are mu'awadat uh, al-maliyah. Mu'amalat, which are munakahat. So the mu'amalat al-maliyah, under their falls bay' and ijara. And then the munakahat, the nikah, and the khula' and the talaq, and you know, all of that falls under there. And then you have the mu'amalat, which are the mukhasamat, the disputes and the argumentations between the people here. And niza' wal qada falls under there. Then you have the mu'amalat, which is al amanat, the al wada'i falls under there. Then you have the mu'amalat, which is what? Al tarikat, which is the inheritance. All of those, each one of them is so many issues under it. So if you study furu' fiqhiyah, it's too much and you won't be able to be precise. Qawa'id al fiqhiyah will give you. Those principles, those legal maxims, when you memorize them, so many furu' will fall under it. And that is why we think, or we chose, for this topic to be from that angle, inshallah ta'ala. For, insa- for example, the word, or the qa'ida, which al-umuru bi maqasidiha, that the scholars mention, or the fuqaha mention, al-umuru bi maqasidiha, this is a qa'ida fiqhiyah. This qa'ida enters, for example, uh, wudu. Does a person need intention to do wudu? Does a person need intention to do tayammum? What about if a person wants to shower and just clean himself? You see, which is just to purify himself. Or if a person wants to uplift filth and impurity from himself, does he need intention? What is the difference between the, the, the chapter of Jinayat when, we, when the issue of intention is spoken about? What about if a person intended to kill a person or another person didn't intend to kill another person? See, all of this goes back to one qa'ida, which is what? Al-umur bi maqasidiha. Look how many issues that it tackles for you. Just by understanding that qa'ida, so many issues fall under it for you. Number two, the second benefit of qawaid al-fiqiyya, and that is the reason why we chose it uh, to make the issue of uh, this transaction, the financial transaction, to be based on qawaid al-fiqiyya is ma'rifatu al-ilal al-ahkam wa hikamiha. Knowing the reason and the wisdom behind why something was made impermissible and why was it haram. So you will understand. Like the Sharia connects a prohibition to a reasoning. Like for example, the Sharia I believe it says uh, the Prophet said, La darara wa la dirar. Do we know anything that brings harm? It's prohibited. Sharan is prohibited. Why? What's the illa? The illa is darar, harm. So we memorize this concept, which is this illa, this reasoning of harm. It, what do you call it? it? Anything that brings harm or harms another person is prohibited. Well, if you look at the third reason, which I'm going to come to, which is ma'rifatu ahkam al-nawazil al-jadida, contemporary issues that occur, that were not seen previously. By knowing qawaid al-fiqiyah, you'll be able to respond to it. For instance, a person harms another person through social media. Now, this is internet. The shari- this is a new, new matter. It's a new innovation. The Sharia has a response for this, which is what? La darara wa la darar. Or, al darar yuzal. So, it's a contemporary issue. It's a newly in- issue, but you're taking it back to what? A qa'ida fiqiyya which you knew. And that's what the benefits is is studying the Qawaid al fiqhiyya Now we want to know, which is the second point, inshallah ta'ala, is what does al Qawaid al fiqhiyya mean? I mean? What is the meaning of al Qawaid al fiqhiyya al Qawaid al fiqhiyya it means, according to the scholars, it is hukmun kulliyun yuta'arrafu minhu hukmu al-juz'iyyat al-fiqhiyya mubasharatan fi akhtari min bab. Ama fi akhtara min bab. It is six things. Qawaid al fiqiyya it's anything that has these six points. 
The first one is hukmun kulliyun. The first thing is hukum. The second thing is kulliyun. The third thing is yuta'arrafu minhu. That's number three. Number four, hukmul juz'iyat al fiqhiya. Five, mubasharatan. Six, fi akthara min bab. So these six, we're going to go through each one, inshallah ta'ala, what it means. Let's start with the first thing. Qawaid al fiqhiya is a hukum. It's a ruling. The word hukum, what does it mean? It means nisbatu amrin ila akhara yahtamilu al ithbata awin nafi. It's attributing something to someone or to something else that can be negated or affirmed. This is a hukum, this is a ruling. You're attributing something to someone or some place or whatever, something that can be affirmed or negated. So, qawaid fiqiyah is a what? It's a hukum. Some of the scholars, they don't use the word hukum. What do they do? يُعَبِّرُ قَوْلُ يُعَبِّرُ فَيَقُولُ عَنِ الْقَوَاعِدِ الْفِقِيَّةِ قَضِيَّةِ They call it قَضِيَّةِ Instead of what? Hukum. They call it قَضِيَّةِ They call it. قَضِيَّةِ is the same meaning as the word hukum. صحيح? It means the same. It's a synonym. The second point is كُلِّيُّن What does كُلِّيُّن mean? It means all-inclusive. You see, the scholars, they disputed amongst themselves, is qawaid al fiqiya is it all-inclusive or is it aglabi? Is it pre-ponderant? Is it pre-ponderant or is it all-inclusive? This is a niqash amongst the scholars. But the poet, he said, تعرف القاعدة الفقية بأنها قضية كلية تعرف القاعدة الفقية بأنها قضية كلية that the قواعد الفقية is قضية كلية it's حكم كلي كلي means what? all inclusive very generic comprehensive all inclusive it brings everything in in other words you could put before it the word كل okay everything لكن the كلية هي is بالقوة. Now here is a discussion amongst the scholars. Then why is it that you say it's all inclusive, and then after that you say there is مستثنيات, there are exceptions, and then you start derive, you start to take out some, you start to take out some some issues or some matters, and now you're saying here it's all inclusive. How do you reconcile between that? Because later, inshallah ta'ala, when we speak about the, uh, the uh, financial transaction, we're going to mention the principle. And once we mention the principle, we're going to mention the types of suwar, the furu' that come under this qa'idah. And then we're going to say, exception, exception is this, exception is this, exception is this. And now here we're saying it's all inclusive. The scholars, they responded to this. And this, of course, as I said, there's a lot of discussion regarding it. They said that it's all inclusive. Without a doubt. Okay? That's based on the ones who said it's all inclusive. And they said, Rahimahumullah, that the ones that were taken out of the principles or that were taken out of these legal maxims were never in the first place under this legal maxim in the first place. It was different to it. Okay? It was what? It was different to it. So it's not under the qa'idah aslan, it's not under the principle or it's not under the legal maxim to begin with, okay? It had nothing to do with it. That's what they, that's what they said, rahimahumullahu jami'an. So, it's hukmun kulliyun. We took those two. The third one is yuta'arrafu. What does yuta'arrafu mean? As you all should know, my beloved brothers and sisters, is the word yuta'arrafu is not yu'rafu. Okay, there's a difference here. Yu'rafu was not used. They said what? Yuta'arrafu. And what's the difference? Before we mention the difference, you all need to remember the qa'ida al-lughawiyyah. The linguistic principle, which was what? That al-ziyadatu fil-mabna ziyadatun fil-ma'na ghaliban. 
that if a construction of a word, okay, if two words are min maddatin wahida, they are from the same root word. Two words that come from the same root word. One has more letters than the other, then the one that has more letters must have additional meaning in it that isn't in the one that has less letters. Yu'rafu and yuta'arrafu, they come from madda wahida, they come from the same root word. So yuta'arrafu has to be something that is uh, other than yu'rafu. So what is yuta'arrafu? Yuta'arrafu means, it means tahtaju ila i'mali dhihni. It requires that the person uh, thinks more, he analyzes more, okay, he critiques more. Whereas yu'rafu, it's that you know it straight away, without having to move, without, sorry, without having to think too much into it. Whereas yuta'arrafu, it comes from, uh, and it occurs, ila i'mali dhihni, that you're moving your mind, you're thinking so much into it. You are analyzing it, you're observing it, okay? That's what the scholars, they mentioned. They said, that is what is meant by yuta'arrafu. The fourth point that is in the definition is hukmul juz'iyat al What is it that the person's observing? What is it that he's analyzing? He's looking at hukmu, the ruling of al juz'iyati, the sub-branches. The furu' al fiqiyah that we were talking about. That you study in fiqh books. Okay, in qism al-ibadat and mu'amalat that we spoke about. Each and every one of those masail, you're moving your mind and you're observing it and you're looking into it, okay? And they are all fall, falling under what? They are all falling, all of those furu' are coming under this one principle. They're all falling under the what? This one particular legal maxim. Number five, before we move on to that, or before we say that, the scholars here, or I already mentioned and I touched on it, which is the qawa'id al fiqhiyah is general. And the qawa'id al, uh, sorry, the furu' al fiqhiyah are sub branches. The sub branches, they come together under this principle. Like, for example, what we said about al umuru bi maqasidiha, it's one of the qawa'id al fiqhiyah. Al Kubra. This qa'ida, how many things fall under it? And Imam al Shafi'i, what did he say? And some of the Salaf, what did they say? Yadhulu sab'ina baban, it enters 70 chapters. How many chapters it enters to? You can use it in Kitab al Tahar, al Salah, Zakat, Sawm, Had, Imu'amalat, and everything. Okay, Al Umur bi Maqasidiha, you look at it. This is a qa'ida. This is a what? It's a principle. You're, looking, you're using this qa'idah for tahara. You're going to use this qa'idah for wudu. You're going to use this qa'idah even for marriage. Like for example, can a man marry a woman? Uh, zawaj, the marriage of biniyat al-talaq. The man wants to marry a woman with the intention of divorcing her. He doesn't tell her. He marries her. And his intent is that he's going to stay with her for four, three months, three weeks or something like that. While he's in the country. And then after that, he wants to divorce her when he leaves the country. Is this nikah permissible? Even though the overwhelming majority of scholars said it's permissible. Because it's not muta'ah. They haven't both agreed on it. The, husband, the man and the woman haven't both agreed on it. It's something that's only in his mind. Is it permissible? La, it's not permissible. It's haram. La yajuz. Why? Because al-umur bi maqasidiha. Matters are all based upon what you intended from it. Ama al-qusud mu'athiratun fil uqud. The intent affects the contract. And we'll be speaking about this in more details, inshallah uh, ta'ala, in, uh, uh, in our topics to come, inshallah ta'ala. So look at this. It falls, so many masail al fiqhiyya mas'ala, mas'ala, it falls under it. Then the author, rahimahullah, he says, mubasharatan. Muba, mubasharatan. The qa'idah fiqhiyah, it's taken from directly. The ruling is taken from the qa'idah fiqhiyah directly. You take the ruling from the qa'idah fiqhiyah mubasharatan directly. The wording of the qa'idah actually gives you the ruling. 
For example, a person comes and says, listen, I prayed dhuhr with wudu. I did wudu, I prayed dhuhr. When I prayed dhuhr, with the wudu that I had, asr time came. I was in a state of doubt whether my wudu went or not. I'm here doubtful of what? Intiqad al-wudu. Did I lose my wudu or not? And then I prayed Salatul Asr. Now Maghrib is about to come and I'm questioning whether my Asr was accepted or whether it was correct. We will say to this individual, we'll say to them that your Salatul Asr was correct. There's nothing wrong with it. Why? Al yaqeenu certainty la yuzalu bi shak. Ama la yazulu bi shak. Certainty cannot be removed with doubt. This individual, he took the ruling from this qa'ida directly. Straight away he's going to say, Jazakallah khairan. Okay, makes sense, and he will go. Here is where the scholars yufarriquna fihi bayn al qa'ida al fiqiyya wal qa'ida al usuliyya. Here is where the scholars distinguish between qa'ida al usuliyya and qa'ida al fiqiyya. Qa'ida al usuliyya is also known as usul al fiqh. And al qawaid al fiqhiyya. This is where they distinguish one from the other. Which is what? Qawaid al usuliyya, you don't take it directly from the wording of the principle. Okay, qa'idat al usuliyya, ama usul al fiqh, you can't take the ruling straight from the wording. Example A person comes and says, What is the ruling regarding letting your bed grow? Letting your beard grow, what is the ruling regarding that? Uh, is it obligatory? Is it voluntary? Um, what is the ruling? The response that we give and we say is Al Amru al Wujub. That the command shows obligation. This person has not taken a ruling from this principle straight away. They're going to get confused. What, what, what command are you talking about? Because this qa'idah is a qa'idah usuri, it's not qa'idah fiqhiyah. The person will say, the person will respond by saying, Al Amru Lil Wujub, that the command shows obligation. What command are you talking about? The person would then have to say, didn't the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not say, Urful liha, Urful liha, Akrimul liha, Wafirul liha? Didn't he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not say that? Let your bed grow, leave your bed, and etc. All of these, are they not command? The person will say yes. Then the command shows obligation. So you would need to bring the evidence and then from the evidence you would have to then bring the principle out so the person can understand it. This is what distinguishes qa'ida al-fiqiyya qa'ida fiqiyya from qa'ida usuliyya. Qa'ida fiqiyya, you take the ruling from it directly. Whereas qa'ida usuliyya, you can't take the ruling out of it straight away. Then the sixth point of the definition of Qa'id al-Fiqiyya is what? Fi akthara min babin. It enters into more than a chapter. Qa'idah, um, Fiqiyya, is not restricted to a particular chapter. This is where the scholars distinguish between a Dabid and a Qa'id al-Fiqiyya. Dabid is restricted to what? A Dabid is what? A Dabid is a principle, is the same as what we mentioned before, but it's only restricted to a particular chapter. For example, the scholars they say, Al Aslu fil Awani at Tahara. The Asal of the utensils is that it's pure. The utensils are Asal, they're pure. So if we see a utensil, we can drink from it or use it, it's pure. The Asal is that. The istishab biqa ma kan ala ma kan. The default position is that it's what? It's pure. Now, al aslu fil awan al tahara. Does that enter into tahara? Does that enter into, sorry, salah? Can you use that principle for zakat? Can you use it for psalm? Can you use it for hajj? Can you use it for mu'amalat? No, you can't. It's only restricted to a particular chapter within tahara, which is the awani. Does that mean this is a babit? 
it doesn't uh, it doesn't stretch to other chapters within the furu al fiqhiyah so now walillah alhamd wal minna we've defined and we've given the understanding of what al qawaid al fiqhiyah means we've explained it we're now going to move on to the third point that we need to do inshallah ta'ala for al qawaid al fiqhiyah which is هل القواعد الفقهية حجة يستند إليها؟ Is the قواعد الفقهية Is it a proof? Or can the قواعد الفقهية be used as a proof, as an evidence? Somebody comes up to you, asks you a question. Instead of saying قال الله and قال الرسول Are you allowed to respond with a قاعدة فقهية? The scholars, they differed. The first group first group of scholars, they said it is permissible and it is allowed. The second group of scholars, they said, no, it's not allowed. And you're not allowed to use a qawaid am al al as a proof. The proof is only in the kitab and the sunnah. Those two views, they are not correct. What is right and what is correct is أنه يجوز it is permissible على التفصيل based on a detailed response so it's not a yes or it's not a no but it is based on the conditions and the points that we're going to mention it becomes either allowed or it becomes not allowed the قواعد الفقهية is of three levels the Qawaid al Fiqiyya are Thalatha Maqamat. There are three levels. The first level is Al Maqam al Awal. The first level is Antakun al Qaida Ma'huda Tamil al Nususi Bilafdiha. That the Qaida is actually taken from a textual evidence, word for word, it's been taken from a textual evidence. This Qaida. Word for word, it's the word either of Allah Azza wa Jalla or the wording of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's taken from the, a Nas, Kitab or Sunnah, word for word. An example for this is the hadith of our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, which Ashab al-Sunan, Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, and Nasa'i, all four of them narrated, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Al-Kharaju bil-Daman. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Al-Kharaju Bil-Daman What does it mean Al-Kharaju Bil-Daman? It means Prophet follows responsibilities And we'll expand on that More inshallah uh, Ta'ala Somebody comes And he asks a question He says I have brought a car from somebody I bought a car from an individual I went to a person who was selling his car, and I bought it from them. When I bought that car, I went out, and that day I drove around. I realized that the car had faults. It was a faulty car. There was problems. I am now going to return the car to the person who I bought it from. I'm going to bring them back the car because the car's faulty. Big problems in the car. So I'm going to bring this car back. The question here is, the time that I was driving the car, do I have to pay towards that? In other words, do I give that person money for using the car for, a, for that period of time? Okay. The response to this is no, you don't have to. You don't have to. You return the car, you take your money back, and there is no money that you have to give to him even though you utilized his car. Even if you rented that car and you saw, the, you saw the fault in it and you returned it, whatever rent money you made from that car in that period of time, you wouldn't have to give it to the person you're, set, you're returning the car back to. Why? Because the qa'ida is al-kharaju bil-daman. And this, had, this wording is exactly, this principle is exactly taken from the Prophet's hadith. Al-Kharaj bil-Daman. What does Al-Kharaj bil-Daman mean? Al-Kharaj bil-Daman means, it means that if 
whilst you were driving that car around and something happened, whose responsibility would it have been? Whose responsibility would it have been? You. Okay? You, the one who brought the car. The responsibility would be on you. If something happened, the responsibility will be on you. And then the profit is yours as well. Since the responsibility is on you, and whatever consequences came wouldn't have gone to the initial owner or the one that sold it to you, it would go back to you. Any harm, any fault, any issue that happened, if somebody died from it, you would have to pay the blood money and etc. So the profit that comes from it is also yours. The qa'idah is al kharaj bil daman. Here, this qa'idah was taken from what? The wording of the Prophet ﷺ. It was exactly what the Prophet said and it became a qa'idah. This one is permissible. There's no issue in this one. The second level of al qawaid al fiqhiyah is an takuna al qa'idah ma'khudata min al nusus bil ma'na. It's not taken from the Prophet's wording. ﷺ. The Prophet didn't say it like this. But the meaning is what's taken from the Prophet. ﷺ. And this falls under. The issue of riwayat al hadith bil ma'na, narrating a hadith based on meaning. Okay? And an example for this is the qa'idah which is al umuru bi maqasidiha. The Prophet didn't say al umur bi maqasidiha. The Prophet said inna al a'malu bin niyat. The Prophet didn't say al umur bi maqasidiha. The Prophet said inna al a'malu bin niyat. So this qa'idah al umuru bi maqasidiha. We take it on board because it's taken from the meaning of the hadith in the bin Yat and other ahadiths. And we spoke about this qa'idah which is al umuru bi maqasidiha. Salah he enters it, tahara he enters it, zakat he enters it, hajj he enters it, he enters everything. From the qawaid. Al-Qubra is from the Qawaid which are Qubra, the comprehensive legal maxims in our religion. It enters Nikah, we mentioned it, which is um, the Nikah, a man marrying a woman with the intention of divorcing her. Is it permissible Shara'an? No, it's not permissible. Even if the overwhelming majority of the scholars say it, no, it's not. I will speak about that more inshallah ta'ala later. Why? Because of this qa'idah al-umur bi maqasidiha. Al-umur bi maqasidiha, it's ma'khudatan min al-nususi bil ma'na, not bi lafdiha. The wording is not from the Prophet ﷺ. Another example is al-yaqeenu la yazulu bi shak. Al-yaqeenu la yazulu bi shak. Al-yaqeenu la yuzalu bi shak. Is also not what the Prophet said. The Prophet didn't say this. It's taken from the hadith of the Prophet where he said to the man, Ya Rasulullah, he said, I think sometimes I pass wind. You see, and then the Prophet instructed him that the wind coming from you, the passing of the wind is based upon unless you hear a noise or you smell it. It's a certainty. That's when you disconnect from the prayer. And that's when you leave the prayer. So al-yaqeen, la yazulu bi shak is taken from those kind of evidences. Whereas this wording, the Prophet didn't say it, alayhi salatu wasalam. That's the second level of al-qawaid al-fiqiyah. The third level of qawaid al-fiqiyah is an takun al-qa'idah istiqra'iyya. The qa'id is istiqra'i. What does istiqra'i mean? A mabniya ala tatabu'i al-ahkab wa laysa laha dalilun khas. This qa'idah fiqiyah is built upon deduction. It's built upon deduction. And it is bimanzilatil qiyas. It's like qiyas. It's actually like analogy. It's based upon independent reasoning. And it's also based upon uh, analogy, qiyas. And it takes the ruling of the qiyas, aslan. And when do you use qiyas? Qiyas is used when you don't find any evidence in a particular issue. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الشَّافِعِيُّ He said, الْقِيَاسُ لِلْفَقِيهِ Qiyas for the jurist is what? It's like eating a dead corpse. You only eat it when you're in a state of necessity. So the third one is only used as evidence when there is no dalil khas. 
An example for that one is the qa'idah which is at tabi' tabi'. What is at tabi' tabi'? It means it means two parties are affiliates if they have or they share the name and the essence. An example would make it more clear, inshallah ta'ala. A person comes and he says, I sold uh, my house. I sold my house. And when I sold my house, the fortress around my house, what was in there as well was a tree. This tree is muthmir. It's a tree which is, it produces great fruits. I want to take that tree back. And I have only sold the person the house. The faqih, Ahmad the Qadi, Ahmad the Mufti, he will ask, based on your community you're from, or the people that you're from, when you use the word bait, house, does it include the garden and what's within the fortress, or does it just mean the place of residency or the place of where the person lives? Or does the word house mean, according to your language, does it mean um, the garden and the balcony, uh, sorry, the uh, front porch? And does it also mean the, 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 anything that's within that fortress? What does the word house mean according to you? I mean, according to not you personally, but the community and the people that you're from. If he says that the fortress and what's within it is considered to be part of the house, then the scholars would say, At-tabi' tabi'. Since it shares the same name as the word house and the fortress and everything, they share the name. These two parties are affiliates in terms of name. They now also share the ruling. Okay, the name is the same. So the tree and the, the house, both, both are considered to be house. The ruling is both the same, which is both of them are owned by this individual. So this qa'ida, okay, is based on qiyas. There's no dalil khas, there's no specific evidence for it. So that should be understood, inshallah ta'ala. Now, walillah, alhamdulillah, minna, we finished the concept of al-qawaid al-fiqiyah. We defined what qawaid, so we spoke about the benefits of studying qawaid al-fiqiyah. We mentioned three benefits. We also talked about the meaning and the definition of al-qawaid al-fiqiyah. And number three, we spoke about is qawaid fiqiyah hujjah yustanadu ilayha? Is it a proof that is that can be used when a person asks you a question? Can you use qawaid al fiqiyah? Now we're going to move on to the next part of our topic, which is al muamalat. What does it mean? Because our topic was what did I say? It is al qawaid al fiqiyah al muta'alliqah. Bil Mu'amalat and then Al Maliyah. Those are the three. So Qawaid al Fiqiyah. The second one is Al Mu'amalat and the third one is what? Al Maliyah. What does Al Mu'amalat mean? What does the meaning of Al Mu'amalat mean? Al Maqsood Bil Mu'amalat and Al Fuqaha. According to the scholars, Mu'amalat means Al Ahkam al Shar'iyah Al Mum Al Munadamati li Ta'amul in Nas. It is the jurisprudent rulings that organizes the way that people interact with one another and the method in which people deal with one another. The jurisprudent rulings, the ahkam al-shar'iyyah, that deals with, okay, the method and the way that the people need to deal with one another. This is called what? Al-mu'amalat. Transactions. Dealings. We've now defined what it means al-mu'amalat and al-fuqaha. We're now going to go into the second part, which is anwa'u al-mu'amalat al-fiqiyah. How many types of mu'amalat are there according to the fuqaha? The fuqaha, they said that the mu'amalat is five types. The first one is mu'amalat maliyah. Financial transaction. Okay? Financial transaction. 
and this involves al bay' okay and al ijara bay' means selling and buying and the second al ijara renting as you can all see we are only going to take which one al muamalat al maliya first one is what we're dealing with and the muamalat al maliya involves al ijara and al bay' we're not going to be speaking about al ijara we're talking about al bay' are we all together that's important we understand it. The second is, the second type of al-mu'amalat al-fiqiyah is al-munakahat, marriage, such as al-zawaj, al-nikah, al-talaq, al-khula, all these issues are, they fall al-munakahat. Number three is al-mukhasamat, disputations and argumentations and conflicts that happen between two people. It's a, it's a mu'amala, it's a dealing. This is the niza' the qada, we speak about it in fiqh books. The hawalat, ahwal al shakhsiyah the amanat, the wada'ir, the things that you're entrusted with and things that you're given and stuff, etc. Al-tarikat. Al-tarikat is al-mirath, the inheritance. The inheritance is a what? It's a mu'amala. From those five, so we've defined what mu'amalat means. We've also spoken about the types of mu'amalat there are. We are now going to restrict, our, restrict ourselves to which one? The first one, which is Mu'amalat al-Maliyah. Mu'amalat al-Maliyah. That's the one we're going to talk about. What does Maliyah mean? Maliyah, as we mentioned, it's finance, wealth. And we're going to talk about what Mal means. Bi'idhnillah al-Kareem. Mal is kullu aynin yuntafa'u biha wa tumlak. We'll speak about that soon, inshallah. We'll speak about that soon. But what we have to understand is the other four, with the other four types of mu'amalat al fiqih we're not going to talk about. We're only going to be discussing al mu'amalat al maliyah bay'ah. So the question here is what's bay'ah? What does bay'ah mean? Fil lugha, and what does it mean istilahan? What does it mean in the language, linguistically, and what does it technically mean according to the jurists, the fuqaha? Al bay'ah fil lugha, bay'ah. In the language is mubadala to shayin bi shay. It is to exchange something with something else. It's muqabala, mubadala. Okay? okay? It's exchanging. Walidarika, um, the scholars they mention bayah, it's in the language, it's considered to be from the words that are called al abdad the words that are called al abdad What does al abdad mean? It means a word that has two opposites as a, as a meaning. It carries the two opposites in the meaning of that word. Okay? Bay' is like that. Bay' in the Arabic language, selling something to someone is bay' and buying something from someone is also bay' That's al -dad. Like also Allah mentions in the Quran, وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُ كُلَّ سَفِينَةٍ غَصْبًا وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ The word wara in the Arabic language is from the abdad, which is, it can be the front and it can also be the back. The word wara can be the front, because وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ I mean أَمَامَهُمْ Before them was a king. And it can also be used as a what? As the back. Another word like that is the word qur. In the Arabic language, the word qur. Amakar. It's a term which can be used for hayat and it can also be used for tuhr. So it's from the abdad. Scholars have written books on that. Ala kulli hal, bay' is what? It's in the language mubadala. Ama, a, ama, it is muqabala. Shay'in bi shay. Something with something. That's what it means in the language. What does it mean? according to the fuqaha and the jurists and the ulama. There are many, many meanings. We're going to be taking, inshallah ta'ala, adaqqa ta'rif, the most precise type of ta'rif in defining the word al-bay'ah. So now we're going to go into al-bay'ah fi istilahi al-ulama. What does bay'ah mean according to the scholars of the language, uh, sorry, the scholars, the fuqaha and the jurists? What do they call bay'ah? There's going to be eight points that you have to know in the definition of al-bay'ah. As we said, we're going to take adaqqa ta'rifat. 
the most precise definition for the word al-bay'. Inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah ta'ala. There are eight points that you have to keep in mind in order for the definition of al-bay' to be correct for you. The first one is, I'm going to read it all, and then we go through each one, one by one. It is mubadalatu malin walaw fi dhimmati aw manfa'atin mubaha bi mithli ahadihi ma'alat ta'bidi ghayra riban wala qard. Eight points. The first one is mubadala. What does mubadala mean? We mentioned before. It's to exchange. And as you can see from the Arabic language, the sigha here, mubadala, is of what? According to the Ahlul Lugha, is mufa'ala. And mufa'ala, what does it show? It shows wujud al-tarafayn, that there's two parties here. There's one who's given and there's one who's taken. So mubadala means to exchange with somebody else. Okay? Good. It's mubadala, it's to exchange. What are you exchanging with this person? Mal. You're exchanging with this individual. Mal. Mal means wealth. Amal. Here, according to the haqiqatul urfiya, according to the people's definition and what they understand as the word mal, is they only think mal is money. And they don't think that a car is mal. And they don't think a book is mal or a mobile phone is mal. According to the fuqaha and the jurists, they understand the word mal to mean all of that which we mentioned. وَلِذَلِكَ The definition that is given is كُلُّ عَيْنٍ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ وَتُمْلَكَ Anything that is benefited from. And that thing has an essence, okay? It's عَيْن, something that exists. And a person benefits from it. And you can own it, you can possess it. This is called man. Okay? It's عَيْن يُنْتَفَعْ وَيُمْلَكَ It's an essence which is present. Good. Two, it is also benefited from. Three, it's possessed. Those three points is what a mal is. It's what a, a mal is. So a car is mal. A pen is mal. A book is mal. Money is mal. This is based upon what? This is the scholars what they define it as. So we've said, we've said the first point is mubadala, is to exchange. And we said uh, this sigha, according to the Ahlul Lugha, what does it mean, mufa'ala? That there's two taraf. Number two, we said it is what? Mubadala to, you're exchanging what? Mal. Mal is wealth. Okay? So it means, mal means money. It also means book, pen, car, and etc. It's kullu ayni yutafa'u bi wa tumlak. Number three is walaw fi dhimmah. Walaw fi dhimmah, what does it mean? Even if it's in the person's dhimmah. We need to explain this much, very well. The ayn, the thing that a person is going to exchange with you, is of two types. So if I want to buy something from you, the presence of this thing and the absence of this thing is scholars, they categorize into two. They say it's, it's one, the thing is in front of me, it's present right there, and you're sending it to me. That's one. Number two is what? It's actually not, in, it's not present. Where is it? It's two types. The one that's not present is two types. The one that's absent is two types. Number one, it really does exist. It's present right now, but not just in front of the person who's buying it. Okay? Probably in another place. Okay? It's in another city. I'm trying to sell to you my house in Ajman. Okay? Or Ras al Khaimah. Okay? And we're not there. But does that house exist now? It's present. It does exist. The reality and the essence of it does exist. But it's not here in front of us. So what am I going to do? I'm going to describe for you a, a description that will remove the ambiguity from it. Okay? I will tell you how many rooms it has. I'll tell you how big it is, the size, and etc. It exists. The second type of that which is in the dhimmatul ba'i' which is not actually in front of the person who's buying it, 
is one that doesn't exist at all. وَإِمَّا أَن تَكُونَ غَيْرَ مَوْجُودَ It is not present at all. It hasn't come about yet. And this is the one which is permissible. is only the one called the Salam. We'll speak about that, inshallah ta'ala, bay'u salam in the qawaid and the principles that we will be discussing. So let me repeat that one more time. What does it mean, walaw fi dhimma? Walaw fi dhimma means, so it's two types. In terms of the product that you're buying, it's two types. The thing is right in front of you, you're buying it. Give me this, thank you very much, buy it, and you leave. That's not walaw fi dhimma. That's not the one we're talking about. Okay? The walaw fi dhimma is the second type, which is what? It's two types. إما أنها موجودة بحقيقة In its essence, it's present. It's made. It was created. It was manufactured. ولكن غائبة But it's absent from this particular gathering. فيصفها وصفا يرفع الجهالة والغرر I will then describe it to you. I will um, present a good, detailed uh, description of this thing that you now don't have any ambiguity regarding it. An example could be me selling you a house that I own in another city and another village. Number two is that, no, it doesn't actually exist. It hasn't been made yet. Okay? وَإِمَّا أَن تَكُونَ غَيْرَ مَوْجُودَ أَصْلًا وَهَذِي خَاصَةَ بِالسَّلَمِ This one's specific to the salam. And we'll talk about bay'u salam, insha'Allah ta'ala, in great details. The fourth point regarding the definition of bay'u istilahan is أَوْ مَنْفَعَةِ mubaha. You are exchanging with this person, not mal. It's not mal. You're exchanging with them, or manfa'atin mubaha. A permitted benefit. Okay, you're exchanging a permitted benefit. What does that mean? The manfa'ah here is not a ayn. It's not something that's present. It's not something that can be touched. It's not, it's not a book. It's not a pen. It's not, it's not something tangible but it's a benefit that you're going to give me. An example for that is, I own a big house, for example. My house is very big, it's a mansion, it's, it's long. And you live behind me. And for you to go to the masjid, you would have to go around my house. You have to go around my house. Whereas I, I live in my house, so I just go through my house. I go to the masjid quick. You, on the other hand, have to go around my house. So you come to me and you say, listen, I will pay you for what? To make a path within your house in order to get to the masjid fast. You sell that to me. He wants a what? He wants a service. He wants a benefit from. He's not, he's not buying something tangible. Okay? He just wants the manfa'ah. He wants the benefit from that road that will be made for him to what? Huh? Go to the masjid fast. Pay attention here. The manfa'ah here has to be mubah, has to be something that's permissible or something that's allowed. Can't be something which is haram. Like in here, the question is, what's the difference between this and then ijara, then renting then? Why is this not renting? Because this is upon what? Ala ta'bid is forever. As long as this house exists and the, the, he hasn't sold this house, okay? He hasn't sold, he hasn't sold the house, and I am allowed, he can't take it back. This is, oh, he sold it to me. I, on the other hand, can I sell it or not? No. Because I'm only benefiting from it. And others can benefit from it if they want to. Okay? Number five. بِمِثْلِ أَحَدِهِمَا Here, what did we say? A person is paying for a manfa'ah. We, 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 we touched on that. The f one before that, a person is given money and they are taking a ayn, something that exists. So you give money, you give nuqud to get what? To get a book. Both of them are like in mal. Mal for mal. The, the, the fifth one is money for money or money for manfa'ah or manfa'ah for money. It doesn't matter. Bimithli ahadihima. One is given money to get the benefit, or the other one's getting a benefit for money, or money for money, or benefit for benefit, doesn't matter. All of that is permissible. 
That's what it means. Bimithli ahadihima. Okay? Six is ala ta'bid forever. So I buy this car from you, it's mine forever. You don't own it anymore. You can never claim this car anymore. It's mine. You've sold it to me forever. The manfa'a, you've sold it to me forever. Can't take it back. Okay? As long as the ayn of this house exists, then I benefit from it. Okay? Ijara lakin is what? Mubadala to manfa'atin bimanin mu'akkata laysat ala ta'bid. It's mu'akkat. The ijara is restricted to a time. The person says, for two years you can benefit from my house. Okay, this is it. I rented it to you. And etc. Number seven is what? غَيْرَ riban. It can't be riba. Why do we have to take riba? Why do we have to do ihtiraz of riba? Interest. Because all of that which we said all from the beginning till now, riba was still in it. Riba, we have to restrict it specifically. I mention it by name to get it out of the definition. Riba is not bayah. Okay, we'll speak about that more in details, inshallah ta'ala. Number eight is wala qard and debt. Debt is also what? All of that which we mentioned is debt. Okay? So we had to mention it by name to take it out of the definition. Um, uh, debt, debt is based upon ihsan. It's based upon kindness and generosity. Ala kulli hal. Ala kulli hal. That's the definition for um, bay'ah. So what we've done, alhamdulillah, is we've defined bay'ah fil lugha and we've defined bay'ah stilahan. We're now going to go into the last point, which is الصفات اللازمة للبيع The attributes and the characteristics that are that have to be present in buying and selling. Okay, when it comes to business, there has to be a characteristics and an attribute which is consistent and continuous. It's only one that I'm going to mention, and inshallah ta'ala, um, we won't go too much into it. And that is, أَلَّا يُضْمَنَ رَأْسُ الْمَالِ وَأَلَّا يُضْمَنَ رِبْحُهُ أَلَّا يُضْمَنَ رَأْسُ الْمَالِ وَأَلَّا يُضْمَنَ رِبْحُهُ A person invested a money into a business. He put 5,000 in there. He's waiting for what? He's waiting for profit. So the person put 5,000 in there. This 5,000 is called رَأْسُ المال. That 5,000, it has to be Open for loss and profit. And no one should guarantee that amount. Shouldn't say that that 5,000 you put in it is guaranteed to return back for you. No. The Rasul Mal that the person put in has to be open for loss and gain. Also, the extra that the person will get beyond and above the profit has to also not be guaranteed for them. All of it can go. All of it can go. This is a sifa lazimah lil bayah. Has to be, okay, a attribute and a characteristic that is present in every transaction, which is Allah yudmana rasul mali wa Allah yudmana ribhu. You cannot guarantee the person the uh, initial amount that they put in, and you're not also allowed to guarantee them the profit that comes from it. This becomes haram. What type of prohibition is this? We will leave it insha'Allah ta'ala for the next session that we're going to have where we're going to go deep into the principles. I'm going to insha'Allah ta'ala I'm going to mention qawa'id principles for bay'ah for buying and selling. These principles will be very comprehensive We'll give a lot of examples. I will even bring, inshallah ta'ala, contemporary examples, bi'idhnillah al-kareem, so you can understand it very well. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, as shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayhi.